And joining me now is Idanis Rodriguez, City Council Member from Manhattan, representing parts of Upper Manhattan, including Inwood and Washington Heights, and running under the party of Unite Immigrants. Thank you for joining us. Thank uh, you. So you've been in the City Council for a while now. Uh, tell viewers a little bit about your accomplishments. What do you think are some of the most important things that you've done over your tenure? Well, the most important accomplishment that I can say that I have is, first of all, being a father with two daughters, <laughs> six and 12, and be able to be there to support her together with my wife. It, as a council member, I've been in uh, the council for the last 10 years, but I believe it is important to share with the viewer the story backward. So not only I've been in the council for 10 years, I've been effective chairing the committee of transportation, addressing the numbers of New Yorkers being killed in the Queens Boulevard, uh, where we had 20, 25 people being killed. So last year, in the last few years, to bring those numbers to zero. To be able to represent a district such as Northern Manhattan, Precinct 34, that in the 80s and the 90s, we have 100 and above homicide. Last year, we only have one. Wow. So for me, this is about uh, someone that myself been in the office for the last 10 years. But before that, what I bring unique from the rest of my friends who are candidates is 40 years without a stop of community activism getting results. Before coming to New York City, back there in the island of Hispaniola in the Dominican Republic, I fought hard and I was part of the movement where well, we got a new building for our school to be built. And talk about in the 80s, the beginning of the 80s. So since I came here in 1983, I just came here to wash dishes at Old Henry Restaurant, West 4 and 6th Avenue, working, driving a taxi, working in a factory, taking myself through City College, being part of the movement where we organized the big takeovers in 89 and 91, persuading Mario Cuomo not to increase tuition and cut the budget, joining the movement against the apartheid for the freedom of Nelson, organizing for the freedom of Nelson Mandela, going in 94 to Puerto Rico in the movement to take the Navy out of Vieque. And then being graduated in 93 and being a co-founder of Luperon High School, a school that we created on the Chancellor Fernander to serve students coming from Latin America. And then also co-founder of Washington Heights, Hoff Academy, a 6 to 12 school, being in the classroom for 13 years, also gave me the unique piece that make a difference myself from the other, which is about among my friends, as far as I know, I have been in the classroom. I chair the committee of transportation. I have experience of two areas. And I'm an immigrant. I end up New Yorkers that represent the 35% or above New Yorkers born and raised in another country. So I believe that I am a unique candidate that also bring the voice of working class, especially immigrants in this debate, and hopefully as an next public advocate. So let's move into that, you know, your candidacy for public advocate. Uh, you've talked about being an activist, an educator, city council member, other things as well. Um, how do you view the position of public advocate? What's the way that you define it if someone comes up to you on the street and says, I, I hear that you're running for public advocate. What, do you, what is that? Well, it, what is a public advocate is exactly what the previous uh, public advocate has done. It. You know, the public, the former one, they took on, on protecting consumers' rights. The former one took it on, on tenants' rights and, and, and also fighting against corruption. I believe that I, I, I'm a, a ready to come as, a, as, a, as an as public advocate, ready of that experience to fight a special interest to be an independent voice in government. The definition of the public advocate, it is there by itself. It's the office that is, work, so is assigned to work to be sure that every city agency provides the services and respect to all New Yorkers. This is not just to the upper class. Now the upper class and even the upper middle class, they know how to protect the right. This is about the disadvantaged New Yorkers. This is about those New Yorkers who are the 40% who are living in poverty. So those are the ones that need the strongest voice. And of course, and what I have proven in my 10 years as a council member is that I know how to build coalition. I want to build a public advocate for all. I want to be there to stand for the middle class and for the working class. But I know that the main responsibility for me to stand on for those New Yorkers that they call three on one, they should not be waiting three and four weeks. As a public advocate, one of the things that I will be working hard is to be sure that anyone who called 311 especially on phone call related to lack of heat and hot water, they should not be waiting more than two weeks to get results. 
So I'm glad you brought that up because that means, you know, taking complaints or, or concerns that come in through 311 and, and acting on it as public advocate. And then there's also the ability as public advocate to pursue issues that you just think are important or things you hear from constituents that aren't through 311. So say a little bit more about if you are the public advocate, how do you set up the office? You have a $3 million budget, let's say, a couple of dozen employees. What does that look like? Is there a lot dedicated to following up on 311? Are there, are there other bureaus? You know, how do you focus the, the office? One other thing that I would do as a public advocate is, first of all, I, I will recruit thousands of lawyers to serve as volunteers. I believe that this was something that Norman Siegel put in his plan, in his vision when he ran. And I think that that particular proposal makes sense. And I see a lot of New Yorkers ready to respond to the ask. When I was chosen as a protester of the year by the Time Magazine on the Occupy movement, I know that I was there as part of the movement because thousands and thousands of people, they were looking for opportunity on how to advocate for the disadvantaged New Yorkers. So one of the things that I would do as a public advocate, I would put someone in charge of recruiting volunteers. The second thing that I would do as a public advocate is that I will open an office only dedicated to transportation. Because I feel, as a chairman of the Transportation Committee, what I've been working, I can say in my curriculum, I speak by myself, passing a number of law, increasing penalty to drivers that they feel to yield, including penalty to drivers that they speak over the speed limit. Mm -hmm. I want to be sure that also, as I have worked in those areas and on the MTA, to be sure that the schedule to upgrade the signal system should not be by 2040, something that I presented at Rooting Center years ago. I believe. Again, that as a public advocate, what I would do is to be sure that I will advocate for more resources, but at the same time, I will put someone in charge only to recruit volunteers. But I know that as in the Occupy movement, thousands of people wanted to be part of the change of that movement. I believe that there's thousands and thousands of New Yorkers waiting to be connected to opportunity on how they can advocate for the disadvantaged New Yorkers. So you mentioned transportation. Obviously, you've been very involved as the chair of the Transportation Committee and the council. If you are public advocate, what does that look like? You you want to push the MTA to upgrade the signals on the subway lines faster than they're saying they will. How how do you do that? What does that look like? How, what are you able to tell voters? If Idanis Rodriguez is the next public advocate, here's how I'll get those signals upgraded faster. I believe that what I have shown in my years as a council is that I being able to always think outside the box. That when I presented a rooting center like four or five years ago that my vision for transportation, many of the things that are being implemented now by the governors and even by the mayor, if you look back to my proposal, they were included in that proposal too. When I say that we should take it to increase, improve the bus service in the city of New York, this is something that now the mayor is talking about it, but I presented years ago. When I say that New York City should increase the contribution to the MTA, but only to a specific projects related to maintenance and repair, at the same time, I fought with the Speaker, Corey Johnson, to be sure that the city of New York increased the contribution. But I was not shy in saying the MTA have to show their numbers. They said there has been a lack of transparency on the MTA. When the 125th a trend is real happening, I called to declare emergency of the MTA, as I also called for the MTA to put through a forensic audit. Something that I will push hard as a public advocate because I feel that we as a city, we criticize corruption in Latin America, but we waste a lot of money here and someone benefit from how we waste the money. So when it comes to the MTA, it's a corporation that has a $1 billion value. It's a corporation that we put in billions and billions of dollars. So as I will advocate for more resources, including congestion price, I will also fight hard for the MTA to be more transparent on how they spend every single dollar. And there, well, one more thing on transportation. You also were behind the fight for the fair fares program for discounted Metro cards uh, for low-income New Yorkers. That has had a little bit of a choppy rollout. The mayor uh, sort of announced an implementation plan that left a lot of people questioning how committed he was to it. Has that is that something that's been? A little bit of a failure in terms of the of the rollout, or how do you characterize that? Is that something where you and your council colleagues have been a little too quiet about? No, I, I feel that again. I always thank God for the opportunity that He has given me, me to serve, 
And, and of course, whatever I do is thinking about how I can be a role model to my two daughters and for the children of the city of New York, a city that all, always has shown that we have compassion for the people. When it comes to how the fair fair was established and visualized, we thought about serving 800,000 New Yorkers who live in poverty. Unfortunately, City Hall failed on implementing the program from the beginning, and even today, there's only a clear path on how undocumented New Yorkers will benefit. But for me, I, again, I introduced legislation on this initiative, and we were able to work in a way with this speaker, something that with the previous speaker, it didn't make us a priority. But my record on transportation, again, is about the fair fair. But one thing that I would like to add also, in issue that is related to transportation, it really related to congestion, is about my effort and my fight to take the horses out of Central Park. Mm -hmm. So what I have shown is also that when it comes to issues that sometimes they are not popular, I have not been afraid, I have not been shy to say, not only we need to bring the fair fair, but together with the animal rights movement in New York City, I fought so hard to take the horses out of Central Park because I believe in those causes, in those issues that are important not only for my generations, but also for the future generation in New York City. One thing that is facing the city in the next few years, if you're a public advocate, people may be asking you to weigh in on, is neighborhood rezonings and how development happens in the city. You've had a rezoning in part of your district. If you were a public advocate, what would your approach be to, to how those rezonings in neighborhoods that are the administration wants to upzone for, for more housing, including affordable housing, some community development? Would you have a certain approach to that as public advocate? Is there a way that you would try to influence that discussion citywide? I believe that we need to look at New York City as a city where since the 80s and the 90s, we invest billions and billions of dollars only to Disney at 42nd Street where well, we provide $185 million incentive to the private sector who create jobs, but not in the out of area. So I believe that the rezoning provide that opportunity for the local community to identify need, but also for the city to be able to make developers accountable on how they should reinvest in the community. Like one of the things that we did in Inward, and I know that it's not popular sometimes, is we took a community that in the last 50 years less than 1,000 affordable apartments has been built. A building where we went through a lot of real estate, a, a lot of a, a, a individual, the private owners, that sometimes they didn't care about changing the landscape of the community. So for me, it was about, I went, I came to Washington Heights and Inward in 1983. I have seen how a lot of my people being priced out and they've been replaced by another individual that they used to live in the Long Island City, that they used to live there in the website. They used to live in Brooklyn, now they are the new tenants. But they are in an apartment that used to belong to Doña Juana, who was priced out by a lander. So for me, the way how I see it is that we need to go build more deeply affordable housing, but also when it comes to the requirement for developer to, uh, to get benefit subsidy, I think that we need to make some changes. Like, I believe that instead of requiring developers to provide a number of parking spots, we need to reduce those requirements and get that value to translate on transportation mm -hmm. so that we can get more funding to say every single station in New York City should have an elevator. Mm -hmm. And that money should come from the governor, it should come from the city, but also it should come through the process when we do rezoning that we should capture more value to invest our resources on transportation. So I believe that the rezoning process, of course, always there's room to improve. Mm. It should be improved. It should include more voice of the community. But, and we need to be sure that when we do any rezoning, there's a real plan to build deeply affordable housing and bring economic development related to creating good paid job in our city. So in our last minute here, uh, council member, you're in a, in a competition here with some colleagues, some uh, colleagues who serve in the state assembly, but also your city council colleagues, some activists. It's a very busy field. There's 17 names that are gonna be on the ballot. If you wanna leave voters with a, a couple thoughts, how do you differentiate yourself from some of your competition who are also elected officials who they might not have the same accomplishments you have, but they have their own set of accomplishments. Are there things that you want voters to understand about how you differentiate yourself from, from your competition? I believe, again, most of the candidates running in this race, they're my friend. I believe that the city will be fine 
in with any of us being elected public advocate. I believe again of what I bring unique to this race is that many New Yorkers we've been fighting for immigrants. I am the immigrant. Many New Yorkers have been fighting and showing compassion for working class. I am the working class. So as many of my friends, they have many, have made many contributions. What I have difference from the rest of my colleagues is 40 years with our staff of community activism, experience in government, being an immigrants born and raised in another country at a time where the immigrants are on the attack. I believe it is important to bring the voice and someone also that has been a teacher for 13 years who has chaired the Committee of Transportation showing that I have been effective, someone that has been keeping a watch on the MTA and also pushing the state in the city to increase the contribution and making the MTA accountable to increase to, the, to increase the level of transparency. So what I feel that I bring in is someone that gets job done, someone that is ready to fight against the special interests and someone that will be independent voice for the working class and middle class New Yorkers. We're going to have to leave it there. City Council Member Donna Rodriguez, thanks very much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thanks a lot.